హాయ్ గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ యూఆర్ వాచింగ్ దీక్షా మెడికల్ రమణ ఛానల్ టైప్ దీక్షా మెడికల్ రమణ ఇన్ యూట్యూబ్ సెర్చ్ బార్ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ మై ఛానల్ అండ్ క్లిక్ బెల్ ఐకాన్ ఫర్ న్యూ అప్డేట్ హాయ్ హలో గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ హలో మీ ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ మై సెల్ఫ్ టు ఎం రమణ యూఆర్ వాచింగ్ దీక్షా మెడికల్ ఛానల్ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు లెర్న్ అబౌట్ ద వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ కాన్సెప్ట్ రిలేటెడ్ టు ద లాంగ్ బోన్ ఆఫ్ మెమరీస్ basically long bone of mammals are divided into two types on the structure on the function on the structure the long bone of mammals is divided into three types one is epiphysis second one is a metaphysis third one is a diaphysis epiphysis is present the end of the long bones and metaphysis is present between the diaphysis and epiphysis and diaphysis is present between the two metaphysis we have clearly explained in the last previous lectures once you visit then come to the based on the functions the long bone again divided into two types one is spongy bone the ends of the long bone contain the spongy nature it is a spongy bone or trabecular bone or cancellous bone this trabecular bone or cancellous bone made up of a long beam like structures are called trabeculae these are irregular beam like structures between the <coughs> a long beam like structures there is a cavities are present these cavities are nothing but a red bone marrow cavities there is red bone marrow cavities filled with the red bone marrow that is a myeloid stem cells are responsible for the production of blood so spongy bone is responsible for the hemopoiesis but what about the compact bone aphysis of long bone is called compact bone it is also known as shaft which is highly mineralized right there are different type of structures are present we will see that internal structure of mammalian bone as a compact bone right so epiphysis metaphysis diaphysis these three are structural difference spongy bone and compact bone is a functional difference spongy bone is responsible for the production of blood that is a hemopoiesis compact bone is responsible for the storage of fat due to presence of yellow bone marrow cavity right now let us see what is the internal structure of the mammalian bone as a compact bone right the internal structure of compact bone that is the internal structure of mammalian bone that is a compact bone or diaphysis it has following parts or following structures there are four important following structures one is periosteum it is the outermost layer second one is endosteum it is the innermost layer third one is a matrix it is present between the periosteum and endosteum and last one is bone marrow cavity it is the interior the space present inside the bone is called marrow cavity let us explain one by one periosteum endosteum matrix and marrow cavity first one periosteum generally periosteum is the outermost covering of bone it is a general structure of the bone a piece of bone i have drawn here just you check it what are the structures are present here we cannot see properly but internally what structures are present the compact bone right this is the totally matrix area this is a periosteum this is endosteum this is a marrow cavity so first one is periosteum periosteum refers it is a outermost covering of the bone so if you take the bone part the outermost covering of the bone is called periosteum this periosteum made up of white fibrous connective tissue layer inner layer consist of a single layer of cells are called osteoblast right this osteoblast responsible for generally we know osteoblast are active immature cells which are responsible formation of osteocytes and matrix so matrix and osteocytes are synthesized by the osteoblast clear so periosteum periosteum is nothing but a outermost covering of the layer that is a periosteum is the outermost layer of the bone which is made up of white fibrous connective tissue below it a layer of cells are present that is we can consider as inner layer inner layer of cells are called osteoblast osteoblast responsible for formation of osteocytes and matrix here periosteum is vascular because here blood vessels are present that means the blood vessels are penetrate into the marrow cavity through the periosteum and matrix and endosteum and reaches to the marrow cavity now go for the second part it is the endosteum endosteum forms innermost layer of the bone right now we go to understand interiorly the innermost layer of the bone 
form the endosteum this endosteum also made up of white fibrous connective tissue see periosteum also made up of white fibrous connective tissue endosteum also made up of white fibrous connective tissue along with that a few reticular fibers also present this endosteum also made up of white fibrous connective tissue along with that some few reticular fibers are present it is surrounded by inner layer one more inner layer of cells are called osteoblast osteoblast to divide to form the osteocytes and matrix so here you have to understand very clearly periosteum and endosteum these are the layers below it there is a one more layer is present that is the osteoblast cell layers this osteoblasts are helps to formation of the osteocytes and matrix so here we can see that the growth of matrix and cells are bidirectional so very important character is the difference between the cartilage and the bone is cartilage is unidirectional growth but bone is bidirectional because due to presence of osteoblast in below the layer of periosteum and below the layer of endosteum that's why bone is a bidirectional growth due to presence of osteoblast these osteoblasts form the osteocytes and matrix in the both directions let us explain about the is a matrix the third part is matrix basically matrix is it is composed of inorganic and organic compounds this also i explained very clearly in the previous lecture in one video about what are the inorganic and organic compounds on the matrix of bone right basically inorganic compounds are mostly salts like calcium phosphate calcium carbonate and calcium bicarbonate is also present calcium phosphate is present in the form of a hydroxy apatite major inorganic compound in the matrix of the bone and organic compounds such as you know that is a collagen fibers collagen fibers are made up of first type of collagen protein right next in the matrix of bone there are two types of canals are present there are two important canals present in the matrix of the bone one is haversian canal second one is volkmann's canal let us see the first type of canals are called haversian canals second type of canals are called volkmann's canals let i explain the haversian canals haversian canals are generally longitudinal canals a longitudinal canals which are arranged parallel to the long axis of the bone right if you see the long axis of the bone it is arranged as a parallel right in these canals one or two blood capillaries nerve fibers and lymph vessels are present right so this is the important character of the only mammalian compact bone presence of haversian canals and presence of haversian system is a characteristic of mammalian bone this haversian system contain haversian canal this haversian canal arranged which are parallel to the marrow cavity right what is the role of these uh, uh, haversian canal transportation purpose that means to interior of the matrix they need blood supply oxygen will be required oxygen would be required and nutrients would be required and collection of waste material these all are done by the canals because canals accommodate uh, blood capillaries and fibers nerve fibers are present along with that lymph vessels are also present second type of canals are called volkmann's canals these volkmann's canals connect the haversian canals one haversian canal is connected by the another haversian canal with help of the volkmann's canal right see for example take this is a longitudinal haversian canal this is a longitudinal haversian canal these both haversian canals are communicate with the volkmann's canals these volkmann's canals may be arranged as a transverse or horizontal is a transverse manner or horizontal manner either oblique manner oblique manner also they have to arranged these volkmann's canals are communicating canals between the haversian canals as well as which connect the periosteum with the marrow cavity here you can understand easily what are the haversian canal is there this haversian canal and marrow cavity is connected by the volkmann's canal these volkmann's canals are arranged in the oblique manner for example these two are the both haversian canals are communicated by the volkmann's canals this volkmann's canal is arranged in horizontal or 
transverse manner or oblique manner. Not only connection between the haversian canals, it connect the periosteum at the same time marrow cavity also. Here we can see very clearly how haversian canal is. This is haversian canal. This haversian canal is connected to the marrow cavity with the help of the Volkmann's canal. This Volkmann's canals also intercommunicating canals between the haversian canal along with the periosteum with the marrow cavity. At the same time, haversian canal are interconnected by the Volkmann's canal. This also we learned, right? Haversian canal and Volkmann's canals mainly helps to transfer of nutrients to the innermost parts of the bones. Right. So let us see the next part in the matrix. What are the structures are present? We have to concentrate on this area.